Well, good morning, everyone. Sorry we can't be together as usual, but I'm so glad you could join us today here on this broadcast. Today, we continue in our New King, New Kingdom series, learning to pray from the Lord's Prayer. And there's never been a more important time for us to learn to pray than now. In this crisis, this coronavirus crisis, who would have thought this would come on the scene? And if there's anything good that can come out of this, it's that we learn, the church learns to worship and pray for her own good, but also to be like a light in a dark place like never before. We come to Matthew 6, 11, where it says, give us today our daily bread. Let me pray as we begin. Father in heaven, we praise you. You are so worthy, you are so good, you're so glorious. Thank you, you are unchanging. You're here with us. But would you teach us to pray? Would you help us to worship and to depend on you for your glory and for our joy? In Jesus' name, Amen. So we come to this phrase, give us today our daily bread. And the title, if there's a title for my message today, it's this, every day in everything. Every day in everything, pray and give thanks. Every day in everything, pray and give thanks thanks. Just think about how you're feeling at the moment with this virus, this crisis. Think about how you, what you're thinking about yourself. Maybe you're worried and anxious for yourself and your loved ones, for the nation, for people in your life. You're concerned about them, the thought of their isolation the thought of them being fearful, the thought of them being hungry, the thought of them being unwell is a pain to us. But just think about your Heavenly Father. If you're concerned, He's concerned. And He doesn't want us isolated, hungry spiritually, by not connecting to Him in prayer and worship. He wants us to be filled with him, filled with his presence. Come to me, says Jesus, all who are weary and heavy burdened, I will give you rest. If you care, just think your heavenly father cares so much more for you and for us. Give us, not just give me, not just give my family, but give us. Pray for the nation. Give us, Lord, would you meet our needs? Pray for the NHS. Would you meet their needs? Pray for your local church. Meet her needs. This situation has revealed to many people how isolated they actually are. They have no deep relationships. And I do hope that's not true of you. I do hope that everyone in this local church, or if you're from another church, that you have deep relationships. We all need to know others enough to be able to pray for them. Give us. Do we know the needs of others? Perhaps this week would be a good time to pray for those friends that come to mind as the Holy Spirit brings them up. Perhaps you could phone those up in your community group, phone people up and ask them, do they have any needs you could pray for or any needs you could actually help with? Give us today our daily bread. How about you go through the list of members of your community group and pray for each of them for their needs. We're to pray each day. It says give us today and our daily bread. Modern day shopping is often maybe weekly or even sometimes monthly. We go out and stock up on as much 
as we can. Maybe we get that two for one offer. We go out and buy all the, sh the, the, the washing powder that's going so we can stock up. And sometimes we can treat prayer and worship like this. Maybe at Christmas we'll go out. Maybe at Easter, maybe once every now, now and then we might worship or pray. That's not how it's meant to be. Your heavenly father wants to connect with you every day. It's like the Israelites in the desert, they were to go out each day to collect the manna. Old style of shopping was that you went out each day and maybe a couple of times a day to collect what you needed. They didn't have, we didn't have refrigerators or freezers. You got what you needed. And we need to learn to be like that, coming to the Father each day, every day, throughout the day, every day in everything, pray. There's nothing too big and nothing too small. And I think sometimes we struggle with the things being maybe that's too small to pray for. Daily bread is a very simple thing. And maybe we can get spoilt in some of our cultures and maybe in our lives we can get spoilt with having things on tap and so easily available that we forget to ask for the simple things and realize that we still we are dependent on the father for everything pray there's nothing too small let's not just go and pray when we when someone's got cancer or when when there's a coronavirus or when we need that holiday we can't afford, or a new car, or a new home, or pray about that move, these big things in life, or that new school. Let's pray about daily bread, everything, every day, about everything. And God has promised the Father has promised to meet all our needs. Jesus says these words. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? The pagans run after all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well, let's be seeking the Father in prayer every day in everything, seeking him and he promises to meet our needs. Now, let's remember that you and I could be the answer to other people's needs. At this time, maybe you've got things that you can share with others as they pray, Heavenly Father, would you give me today my daily bread? Maybe you are the one to give the bread, to give that money, to give that phone call, to take an interest in someone else. Secondly, we're not only to be every, every day in everything, pray, we're also every day in everything to be thankful. When he does provide that bread, we're to be thankful. How thankful are we? Do we pray for things but then fail to give thanks when he answers? Do we notice when he answers? Now, we'll find what we look for. If you seek, you will find. If we look for what God is doing, if we look for how he's providing, if we look for how he's answering prayers, we will find ample reasons to give thanks. But if we look for problems and look for worries and look for troubles, we are sure to find that also. There's so many reasons to give thanks at this time. We can give thanks for our governments who are working so hard, our emergency services, our NHS, Give thanks for our church. Give thanks for our family. Give thanks for all the good things that are happening in our lives. Paul says this, Philippians 4, 5 to 7, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness 
be evident to all. And then sometimes when fear comes in, gentleness goes out the window. We become angry and outraged. I heard there was a, earlier somebody was telling me that there was a fight at a local supermarket over toilet rolls. Gentleness can go out of the window when fear comes in. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now, transcends all understanding. Peace that transcends all understanding. Don't we ever need that? Wouldn't you like to have that peace that transcends all understanding? Well, we need to pray with thanksgiving. Rejoice in the Lord. He is near. How can we overcome anxiety? Praying with thanksgiving. Every day in everything, pray and give thanks. Recently, I've been learning and uh, I've set myself a goal to be more grateful and more thankful because like many, I guess, I can look at the, see the problems. And I've been at the end of every day, I sit down in silence, close my eyes and just replay as much of the day as I can remember in my memory, thanking God for all the good things that have happened that day. That amazing cheese sandwich. That song I listened to that raised my spirits. The government working hard for us. That person I met with. That half an hour of sunshine. My wife features every day. When was the last time you thanked God for an inside toilet and for clean water? Let's be thankful people. Let's be grateful people. This leads to joy in our own hearts. If we want to be faithful in prayer, let me encourage you to write a prayer list. Maybe you could include things like yourself. What do you need prayer for? Your family, your church, your community group, your neighbours, your work situation, your city and nation international situations. Write your prayer list and be faithful in prayer over the big and the small things. A couple of things just to mention. Do be praying for community church. Pray for our finances. Pray for provision. Our income has been massively whacked through all of this. And um, I'm praying, Heavenly Father, give us today our daily bread, meet our needs. We still need to pay all our bills. We still need to pay for this building project. So please do be praying for that and seeing how you could be the answer to meeting the needs of our church together. Also, in each church news every week, we have a prayer focus. I do hope you've read it this week. It comes out in an email. Do contact the church office if you don't have that email. And this week, I've gone through the Lord's Prayer showing how we could pray for the coronavirus context. So please do use and read and pray using our prayer focus in the church news. I'm told that geese can fly 70% further because they fly in a V formation. That formation creates more lift, less drag, so together they go further. And the one at the front who's getting, doing most of the work t changes to the back and someone else takes their turn and they all take a turn to go at the front and do more work. Together, we always do better. And if we're going to be people who pray and give thanks as a lifestyle, we need to be in a community of prayer and thankfulness. Over this period, 
We're still encouraging you to, to link together with your community groups digitally, by phone, in any way that you can. Your community group leader will be contacting you to invite you to get involved. If you don't know how to connect digitally or use this modern technology, please do be patient. Please do pray. You can pray about this. Father, help me to, to use this technology. Contact your community group leader. If you're not in a community group, if you're finding it really hard at the moment, you want some advice, you, you've got some questions to ask, please do contact the church office, office at communitychurchputney.com and we'll help out in any way that we can. But the point is, together we go further. Together we go faster. It's like those cyclists in the Tour de France who come together in that group called the Peloton. Together they go further and faster. We need to be in a community. If we're going to be those people that every day, in everything, pray and give thanks, we need to be connected to a community that encourages us in that. As we come to the end today, let me remind you of the order of this prayer. It begins with, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom, your will. It's worship. Let's remember to worship. Worship sets the context of our lives. It re-centres us. It reminds us that he is great and he is loving. And he's in control. We don't need to fear or be anxious. The Lord is near. Worship. Let's begin each day with worship. When we're fearful, let's worship. When we're fearful, that's not the time to, to speak negatively and to, to throw away worship. No. When we feel down and fearful, then that is the time. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Let's remember this begins with worship. So this week, let's combat fear. Every day, in everything, pray and give thanks. Make a prayer list and pray faithfully. Link with your community group so that you can be encouraged and you can encourage others every day in everything pray and give thanks i just want to finish with one final thing i have here three oranges i i won't try to juggle them because i will just drop them i can't juggle three balls now some of you might be able to juggle three three i mean maybe juggle four or five but i can definitely juggle one and Jesus encourages us to focus on today. Give us today our daily bread. This orange is metaphorical of the day and all its concerns, all your experiences, all that goes on in your life. We can focus on this day. We can pray about this day. We can deal with what comes our way today. We can pray, give us today our daily breads. Too often we can focus on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, ah, next week, next month, and we're juggling, we're trying to catch it all, we catch it all, and peace and joy are gone. Whilst we don't even notice what God is doing amongst us because we're caught up with fear and anxiety. And I know some of you will really struggle with fear and anxiety at this time, so let me encourage you, focus on the day. Pray, give me today my daily bread. I trust you to meet my needs today. And as people come to mind, pray for them. As situations happen that you can give thanks for, give thanks through that day. So let me encourage you. Every day, in everything, pray and give thanks.